Good morning, everyone. My name is Artur Pascolotto, and I'm here today to talk about the NJL model once again. But actually, I'm going to talk about something that includes the NJL model. I use the NJL, NJL model as an example, but actually it's something a little more uh, general than the NJL model. And if you remember my first talk, and if you don't, I'll ask kindly for Lucy to add the link in the description of this video. And it's going to be on YouTube, right? And let's begin to talk about the NJL model. That is an effective model for description of quarks. And this model, we used to work with him with this model in the mean field mean field approximation and the equations that arise from this Lagrangian density uh, are, we use to describe the system of, of a gas of quarks that are strongly interacting. And one of the key components that describes this systems, this system is the gap equation. The NJL gap equation is the equation number two, and this equation is used to calculate the value of the effective mass that is generated through a mechanism we call chiral symmetry breaking. And this effective mass is generated, it's generated through this interaction of the quarks and this broken symmetry. But if you pay attention to the equation number three, this is an integral that we integrate from zero to plus infinity. And if you uh, sum the powers of k, we, you can see that in the bottom we have square root of k squared plus, a, plus the mass, but you can ignore the mass and just pretend the mass equals zero. But, and then you see that we will have an integral of k from zero to infinity, and that's obviously divergent. So we need to treat this divergency uh, with a procedure we call regularization. There are several ways of regularizing this integral. And I want you to pay attention to the second integral, the integral with respect to the medium. You can see that there are two Fermi Dirac uh, terms. You want one for minus mu and one for plus mu right here. And these terms account for the positive and negative or uh, the particles and the antiparticles. And when t, which is one over beta, and mu are equal to zero, these both terms goes to zero. And if we are in the vacuum where t equals mu equals zero, we will only have the integral number one or the equation number number three. And this is why we call the I1 the vacuum integral. And the second integral is the medium integral. You can see that the Fermi Dirac term is obviously convergent. And I'll show this later. And that this is why we need to regularize it, the I1 term. Uh, there are different methods. And I'm here today. I'm, I'm here. Today, I'm here to talk about four of them. One of them is pretty easy. You just introduce a sharp cutoff at a high value we call lambda, which we can interpret as the maximum scale of the model. There are Pauli Villers method that consists in summing, adding convenient terms related to massive particles in order to cancel the divergence. And we need to make sure that those terms of C and alpha, they obey this equation, this system of equations number seven, to ensure that in the vacuum, this integral does not diverge. There are form factors, <clears throat> which is another regularization procedure where we just multiply the integrand by a function that will make sure that everything converges. And here we have four examples, which is the Gaussian regularization and the Fermi-Dirac regularization. 
and we can see that this is an example of Fermi Dirac distribution and we can see that it obviously goes to zero when x gets large or when you go back to this <clears throat> first equation when k goes to infinity because this integral is is, is with respect of k from zero to infinity this term goes to infinity and then you have one over e to the one over one plus e to a very big value it, it will obviously converge but somewhere in the literature some people are applying the regularization procedures not only to the vacuum but also to the mean part of the of the equation of the gap equation and consequently this will have some very um, inconsistent very important and noticeable inconsistencies beginning with thermodynamics and possibly with causality and that's why that this is this is what i'm going to talk about if we see for example applying the sharp cutoff in the vacuum and in the vacuum and the med medium we can see that it, the pressure divided by the temperature to the fourth power does not converge to the value we suppose we expect for a free gas for example if you see uh, the red line is when you apply only to the vacuum and the black line is when you apply to the vacuum and the medium and the SB limit or Stefan Boltzmann limit represents the limit of a free gas and the same thing happens to the energy density we see that this the value converges only if you apply if you apply uh, the regularization only to the vacuum otherwise it will go to zero which is something really weird because you're supposed to have weaker interaction as long as you increase the temperature and then with a very high temperature you're supposed to have something uh, that resembles uh, free gas but what this uh, what these results indicate is that if you apply the regularization to the medium part, you will you will scramble all the thermodynamics and it will be a little bit weird, at least. Uh, this is also happens to the equation of state. If you vary the temperature, this will have a very strange result. And Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. But the most weird result so far is that if you take the speed of sound squared and you calculate for both situations when you regularize the vacuum and the medium, you can see that for a not so high value of temperature, you have the speed of sound greater than the speed of light. And this is something very strange to have. This result was obtained with three-dimensional cutoff, but it is also consistent with all the other four, all the other three regularization methods. You can see that almost for the same value of temperature, you can you have the value of the speed of sound squared uh, passing passing the speed of light, and this is a very strange result and it's something I'm working on right now and that's it thank you for your attention thank you questions thanks thank you.